I'm often asked by people in the YouTube comment section, should I late register for a poker tournament? First things first, mm -hmm. understand that whenever you buy in for a poker tournament after it has started, mm -hmm. you're playing a poker tournament that has a different structure than the initial tournament that started. If you played the tournament and you bust on the first hand by getting a name with pocket aces, it should not matter to you at all that you just lost with pocket aces. The question becomes, would I play this tournament if I just showed up to the casino? And the answer in that scenario should very often be yes, because you're just missing one buy-in from your bankroll, and obviously you should not care if you get unlucky in poker. That happens. Don't be a baby. Okay. A different question becomes, should you register very, very late? A lot of casinos will let you buy in eight hours into the tournament or 12 hours into the tournament where you only get 12 big blinds or 15 big blinds. And this is a scenario where you want to ask, should I play that tournament? Because it is another individual event. Should I play a tournament where I start with only 12 big blinds? Well, understand, you may have a decently large edge, bigger than you think. A lot of people think there is no edge to be had right then. Also, realize you're very close to getting in the money, assuming they let you buy in super duper late. And also, you won't actually need to spend much time studying deep stack poker because you're never going to have a deep stack, which may let you hyper specialize. So let's go through each of these three points. Understand that you may have a decent edge. As you get closer to getting in the money, or whenever there are payout implications, such as at a final table, you profit by folding. As an extreme example, say... You can buy in when there's 15 players remaining in the tournament and 14 get in the money. So we're on the bubble. Let's say somebody goes all in for 20 big blinds, somebody else with 20 big blind calls, and you have a two big blind stack. Well, you should be folding almost everything here because by folding, you guarantee that you get in the money. So your two big blind stack, which is worth almost nothing in terms of chips, is actually worth a whole lot in terms of dollars because you're going to collect the minimum cash every single time. So you make money by folding. Now, most tournaments won't let you buy in exactly on the bubble, but it's not so uncommon for there to be, let's say, 15 people getting paid and you're able to buy in with 30 people remaining. And in that scenario, you are going to turn a small profit purely because every time you fold, you're making a little bit of money. And as you can register closer and closer to getting in the money, it becomes very, very difficult to actually lose. A world-class poker player and tournament director, Kenny Hallert, has an article where he goes through and tries to convince tournament directors to not let people register really late because it's really bad for the people who buy in on time if people can buy in late because every time someone buys in and they extract a 5 or 10% return on investment just by being close to the money, that comes out of everybody else's money in the prize pool, right? And uh, that's not good. So make sure you check out that article. We'll put a link in the description below if you feel inclined to read that. Long story short, if you buy in late into a tournament that doesn't rake a lot and you're kind of close to getting the money, you play well short stacked, you're going to have a tough time losing. You're not going to beat some gigantic winner. You're going to win 5 or 10% return on investment. But it's not really a, uh, call it a crapshoot like a lot of people think it is when you have only 12 big lines. That said, if you play short stacked poorly, obviously, buying in late is not going to work out for you. If you start with 12 big blinds and you don't know how to play with 12 big blinds, you're torching your money. So you got to study, obviously. Also, if the rake is large, it's not going to work out for you. If you're playing a $100 buy-in local poker tournament and they take $20 out of that as rake, late buying in with 12 big blinds is not going to work for you at all because the rake is going to crush you. So if those two things are happening, either you're bad at short stack or the rake is large, late registering is bad for you. Next, you're getting closer to getting in the money when you buy in late. And this is kind of similar to the same point, or the previous point, but I want to make it clear in this scenario, what I'm talking about here, a benefit of this is that you only have to play for a few hours before you get in the money and have some sort of return. If you are a busy person, maybe you work 9 to 5 and you can late register up until 6 p.m., late registering could be very good because you get to work your job, make your money, and then go play poker and still have an edge, which can be amazing. Also, you may experience less variance due to getting in the money a little bit more often. Because you're going to get in the money more often in exchange for not winning the tournament as often. Understand that whenever you buy in late with 12 big blinds or 20 big blinds, you're not going to have the big stack very often, and that is okay. So you're rarely going to have the big stack, and that's going to result in you winning the tournament less often. But from the previous slide, you actually can have an edge in these scenarios. So you can invest less time, which will give you a higher 
potential hourly rate. Now also, if you go to play poker to get to actually play some poker hands and get to get in there and battle hard and get to gamble at the table for 12 hours, well, late registering is not for you. If you go to the tournament and you buy in with 12 big blinds or 15 big blinds or 20 big blinds, you're gonna double up or be out soon, like within an hour or two, a lot of the time. So understand that late registering will result in your time spent at the table going down drastically. And you will see a lot of the best poker players in the world almost entirely buy in late. They don't even show up on time because they realize if you can buy in super late, it's a good use of time. Next, you do not need to know deep stacked strategy if you buy in late. There are some training sites out there that only teach 40 big blind poker and shorter. They completely ignore deep stack play and they recommend all of their players just buy in short. That way you can specialize. And I am actually a big fan of specializing. However, I do think there is a decent amount of edge to be extracted early from the players who are especially bad. I mean, imagine all the bad players show up early and all the good players show up late. If you're the only good player showing up early, that's going to be a really good spot for you. Um, that said, if you do only register late, you will almost never have a big stack. And if you never have a big stack, you don't really need to know deep stack strategy. So you can focus all of your time on studying shallow stack, medium stacked, ICM, final table strategy. And that might be a good use of your time, especially if you are very new to poker and you're really working hard to improve your skills initially. Like if you're a cash game player moving into tournaments, I realize you may have deep stack skills, but perhaps you do want to spend a lot of time hyper-focusing on playing the shallow stacked game. And if you are, let's say, a good cash game player, you can spend the day playing cash games and then late register the tournament playing your 12 or 15 or 20 big blind strategy you're working on, play for two hours on average, bust, then go back to cash games and continue winning money. Not such a bad idea, right? That said, like I did just say a second ago, there are many profitable opportunities in the early levels, especially in tournaments that are overly soft, like main events or tournaments where a lot of players satellite in because when people satellite in, a lot of the players are coming from much smaller average buy-in games and they're playing a bit out of their comfort zone. So I personally try to buy in on time every time because like I said, a lot of the absolute best players or some of the best players, they buy in very late and that results in the beginning levels being abnormally soft. And I think it's worth it for me. That said, I mean, I, I could easily be convinced that maybe we should just all be buying in late. Could you imagine if we just all decided to buy in late and no one showed up on time? Oh, that would wreck the casino. That's actually why in a lot of the highest stakes tournaments now, they charge you $0 rake if you show up on time. Because they want the game to get running because they realize that it's actually kind of bad for you, especially if they allow late registering. So to incentivize you to show up on time, you get it rake free, which is quite nice. So anyway, that is it for today. I wanted to give you the three main reasons why you should late register for poker tournaments. Again, number one, you could have a decently large edge because you're already kind of close to getting in the money and you profit by folding. Number two, you're close to getting in the money, which allows you to make very good use of your time. And number three, you can hyper-focus by studying only shallow stacked, medium stacked, and play when there are big payout implications. That's me for today. If you enjoyed today's video, click the like and subscribe button below. Click the notification bell. If you have a friend who hates late registering, show them this video. If you have a tournament director, that lets you late register for a long time, show them this video. I do not like re-entry tournaments at all. I think maybe at once you should get one re-entry for like a, for a short period of time because every time a good player re-enters, they extract value from the rest of the players and that results in return on investments across the board going down. That said, casinos love re-entries because they get to rake the tournament again. They love rake. They love gobbling up the money. And that's money coming out of your pocket. That's me for today. If you enjoyed today's video again, click below. Thank you, good luck, have fun, and I hope whenever you re-enter, you spin it up.